Hello, I'm Asia May Pirtle from the Lilly Family School of Philanthropy. I'm pleased to welcome you to the first in a video series we're calling Donor Perspectives. Our first guest is Dilmaz Warich. With over 25 years of experience in education, community organizing, and interfaith collaboration, Dilmaz exemplifies what influential leadership, engagement, and compassion can bring to the selfless role of civil servant and philanthropist. She has transformed her passion for knowledge acquisition and facilitation into building strong community-based relationships through philanthropy. Her moral code and drive to affect change is what breathes life into her philanthropic and interfaith engagements. Dilnaz holds multiple board appointed positions throughout Chicagoland and is a champion for the Community Collaboration Initiative, which is hosting its year of learning on February 18th. Please join me in welcoming Dilnaz Warich. Dilnaz, thanks again for joining us here today. I gave the audience a little bit of a background on you, but I would love to hear in your own words um, about your own philanthropic autobiography. You know, what about your past has informed your present? Sure. Um, so Asia, I'm so excited to have this conversation and I come to you with a bunch of identities. So I always like to explore my identities before I have these conversations. Number one, I come to you as an immigrant. I come to you as a female. I come to you as a Muslim. I come to you as an exercise enthusiast. I come to you as a chocolate lover. I come to you with lots of different identities. And when you talk about my philanthropic identity, I do come to you as a philanthropist. And what's interesting is growing up, I used to have this term of um, philanthropist and I thought, oh, a philanthropist, that's a wealthy white male. I never considered myself a, a philanthropist. And you talk, you asked me about this question about my philanthropist journey, and it really has been a journey. It's, it's been a journey of me reclaiming the word philanthropy and philanthropist because someone else hijacked that word from my narrative. Um, it's so important for us to realize that um, philanthropy really just means the love of human race, the love of the humankind. And you and I having this conversation really shows how much we really want to create this beloved community together. And this beloved community could be through our time of volunteering, it could be um, allocations we give, but it's really creating this human community together. So I remember when I was a young girl, um, we would sit at the kitchen table, my mom, my dad, my sister and I, it was the four of us. And we'd sit at the kitchen table right before the month of Ramadan, which is the month of um, fasting, the month of giving. And my mom and dad would sit down and talk to us about you know, how they might have relatives in India and how they might have relatives in um, certain parts of India that really just needed a little bit of money for some surgery or to go to school or to buy a sewing machine. And they really instilled in us how my parents' backyard was India. Fast forward now, when I sit with my two sons and my husband, our backyard is, you know, Chicago, it's America. How do we make sure that we um, love our humankind right here and do the best we can for the individuals that are in need right here? That's wonderful. So, um, you know, it, I love that image of, you know, a family sitting around a kitchen table because I think, you know, most important conversations uh, happen in those moments. Um, and so how have you brought that to your own family and the way that your family approaches philanthropy now? Um, are you having those same, you know, kitchen conversations about it? And, you know, what's your approach? So every year we actually um, sit down twice. Our family sits down twice, um, once right before the month of Ramadan, once usually during winter break. And we just talk about our family values. What are our family values? Where do we wanna give? Why do we wanna give? We've created a matrix. Um, we've created uh, ideas of like, I've got two sons, you know, they talk about how passionate they are about the youth, about the underserved community that's um, black and brown. They talk about sports. So how do we make sure we uplift these conversations in our giving? Then we also, as um, my husband and I explore more about how we haven't really given to certain Muslim-led nonprofits and why we haven't given to those Muslim-led nonprofits. And then the larger conversations that I have with the philanthropic community is so important. Um, philanthropy is really re-examining itself currently, especially in 2021, what happened with George Floyd, what happened with the numerous pandemics that we're going through. 
Philanthropy is really decolonizing um, the wealth gap. We're understanding why philanthropy gave in certain places and who gave and how do we, again, reclaim that narrative of, um, you know, the, not the emerging philanthropist, not the, uh, you know, up and coming philanthropist, but philanthropists that have been giving in the churches, that have been giving in the mosques and make sure those stories are told, making sure I talk to my own children about how our faith drives us to be philanthropists. So as Muslims, um, our family sits down um, every single year and we write these allocations out, but it's driven through our faith. It's driven through the fact that we've been given a gift and how do we share that gift with the larger community? And it's also given through respect. How do we make sure that as grantors, we have respect for grantees and how grantees have respect for grantors. So it's a symbiotic relationship and how it's so important for our family to live with this sense of respect and dignity for the humankind. Wonderful. So um, it sounds like you guys are very thoughtful in your giving and the way that you are going to engage with different um, organizations. Um, you have a good recognition of philanthropy as more than just kind of writing a check. Um, and so one of the things that you've been involved with is the Community Collaboration Initiative. I'd love for you to tell our audience a little bit about the work uh, there and, and then also what you've learned from it, um, both as you've seen organizations go through the initiative and the work that's being done there, but then also personally as a philanthropist, has it shaped the way that you view uh, your own giving and involvement? So Community Collaboration Initiative is a three-year research-based um, study that's being done through um, Indiana University Lilly School of Philanthropy. And um, the private investigator, the PI is Dr. Sharak Siddiqui. So Dar Dr. Sharak Siddiqui and I have been having conversations um, since 2018. And we've been talking about number one, uh, Muslim-led nonprofits why are they so in the fundraising mo mode and not moving towards the stewardship mode? How do we make sure Muslim-led nonprofits really understand what stewardship of donors means? Number two, I found through my um, really two years of studying the organizations that we give to, how they really aren't collaborating. And then I realized, oh my God, Muslim-led nonprofits are just like other nonprofits. They just don't have time to collaborate. Um, Asia, you and I wouldn't be having this conversation if we didn't put it into our calendar. It's very hard for nonprofit leaders and executive directors and board members and staff members just to ha casually have conversations every month because our days are really busy. So that's another thing I found out is people aren't collaborating collaborating. Um, Muslim-led nonprofits aren't really moving from the fundraising mode to the stewardship development mode. And the last thing I realized is we really aren't a very diverse community, even though we're not a monolith. Unfortunately, a lot of um, organizations are kind of stuck in their silos and really comfortable in their silos. So I was really struggling with Dr. Sharak Siddiqui about how do we push uh, Muslim-led nonprofits to have this different um, concept and make sure that we're uh, getting comfortable being uncomfortable and being proximate where the problems are. And that's how uh, community collaboration really uh, birthed from this uh, research that I've been doing for two years and having conversations with philanthropic leaders. So in 2021, we started, that was year one. Year one of community collaboration initiative goal was collaboration through trust building. So we brought together 25 Muslim-led nonprofits um, with budgets of $100,000 to $10 million, so really diverse budgets um, from the West Coast, from the East Coast, but predominantly from the Chicago region because we are a place-based family. family. And the last thing um, we really focused on in 2021 is during this COVID time, we never expected to just do virtual Zoom calls every month. We thought we'd physically get together, we'd build community, but that didn't happen. So we focused on trust building in 2021 and it was difficult to do. Collaborations are messy, Asia, and you know that as well. And it, it's such a buzzword, collaboration, but it's not an easy thing to do. 
So now currently in 2021, we're doing our goal of collaboration through programming. So our 25 Muslim led nonprofits are getting together and they're having conversations in their sectors about really understanding what do they want to build this year? Do they wanna build endowments? Do they wanna start understanding a little bit more about zakat allocations? Do they wanna build a community garden? But what does the community want to do? This is a very community drift driven initiative. It is not a donor driven initiative. And the reason I say it's not a donor driven initiative is I'm not part of any of these conversations. When um, Dr. Shark Siddiqui, a facilitator and the organization get together every single month. While they're having conversations, Asia, what I did in the last um, probably 14 months is I've had about 110 conversations with program officers and different foundations, with uh, um, CEOs and presidents of foundations, with community um, foundations. I just kept talking to more and more philanthropic individuals. And I found something and I realized number one, but the foundation world really doesn't understand the Muslim led nonprofits. What are they doing and why are they there? And how is this all working out? Number two, I found out that the um, philanthropic world doesn't really have a relationship with the Muslim led nonprofit. So it's like, okay, you've got one organization in, in your portfolio. It's like check mark, I've done it. You know, my racial portfolio for Muslim organizations is done, but we haven't really developed those relationships. And the third thing I found out through my conversations, Asia, is we really don't have Muslims in committee positions, in leadership board positions. So they're not making a difference influentially. They're not making a difference in the leadership um, circles. So how do we make sure this happens? So in year two, which is 2022 of a community collaboration initiative, it's collaboration through sustainability. So what we're doing is making sure that our 25 Muslim-led nonprofits are having opportunities to understand what does it mean to be part of this uh, philanthropic portfolio? What are the nuances to understand about the foundation world? How do we build these relationships and how do we intentionally take action to make sure Muslims are in the spaces of decision making? Well, this is just really exciting work and um, it is hard work, as you say. Um, I think one of the learnings from 2020 for all of us is, you know, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. We've all had to shift our perspective quite a bit, and hopefully it makes us, um, you know, able to have those conversations in a more meaningful way and um, opens us up to new and different collaborations like the one that you're talking about. Um, before we uh, close, I want to make sure um, to hit on the fact that you guys have an event coming up here in just a couple weeks and I'd love for you to just um, give a little plug for it and talk through um, what the event on February 18th is that correct yep uh, would be about so through all the work that we've been doing at a community collaboration initiative, we've really been intentionally creating spaces for the philanthropic world, for the Muslim-led um, nonprofits and the allies of the Muslim-led nonprofits. How do we uh, intersect? How do we have intentional, uncomfortable conversations? Um, so on February 18th is the first of many events that we're having. It's called a learning launch. Um, and in the learning launch, February 18th, we're bringing the philanthropic world, the civic uh, world, the government world, the higher ed world together. And we're really talking about what does it look like to have a Muslim led leader in your um, uh, community? What does it look like to just sit down and listen, right? A lot of times we're not really listening to our marginalized communities. What do our marginalized, marginalized communities wanted to share with the philanthropic world, with our government, with our civic world? So it's having these conversations. So we do hope you join us. Um, it's a virtual event, like all of our events are um, because of COVID. And it's February 18th from 12 o'clock to 3, uh, 15 Central Standard Time. It is three hours and 15 minutes long to make sure that we have breakout rooms, we have thought partnership. Um, we're doing round table, small, intimate conversations but we're so excited to have a great robust um, group together. We already have over like 120 people registered. We'd love for um, any individuals that are interested in learning more about the Muslim led nonprofits and how to build a stronger beloved community together to be part of this event. 
Well, that's wonderful. Um, we will go ahead and link to the event um, in the post so that people can uh, find out more information and figure out how to get registered. Um, thank you so much, Del Naz. This is going to be the first in kind of a series of conversations between the two of us and um, might have some other guests join us as well, uh, like Dr. Siddiqui. So uh, just appreciate your time this morning and um, so excited about uh, your work. I think it really gets at the heart of what philanthropy is. Um, and as you say, uh, that's really serving our beloved community. So thank you so much. Thank you for the conversation.